a photogenic octobox. In this case, I've got a 120cm octobox. Uh, basically, they're the same thing as a softbox. I'll show you how you uh, take them out of the bag and uh, set them up ready to use. They all come in the same kind of slip case. This is the main external side of the, uh, of the octobox in this case. You'll find the softboxes are the same. On this side as well, you will have the Velcro strips and the actual scrim fabric which gives you a light and soft quality. So I'm just going to show you how to set it up. Now always look for the side that has the speed ring first. This is the side that's going to mount onto the light itself. I always like to put these things press down on like hard stuff like this and just let the weight that come down on the side. Then just like the frame of an umbrella, so as you can see, the, this construction is basically similar to most umbrellas. You just need to push the centre down along the middle of the stem until it locks. You should hear a click and the box stays wide open. This is what it looks like. So without the scrim put in, you can see they highly reflect the reflective surface and so on. Now I'm going to show you how to put the scrim onto this uh, soft box. Let's get out of the bag first. Notice now we have two scrims here. You've got a choice of whether you use just the outer scrim or if you want to put the inner scrim in there first. I'll do it with both on. The whole point of having these double scrims is to give that like that extra even illumination so you don't get a bright hot spot showing in the center of the soft box. Of course, with each scrim that you can add to your light, you're going to lose about a stop. So just keep that in mind. If you really need that second scrim, you need it because it's going to give you that extra soft quality and even light. However, if you probably don't need it to be that even and you need a little bit more power, you can save the go with just the first screen, the outer screen. So I'll show you how to install the inner screen first. So you see the inner screen has this uh, ring here to accommodate the center, the center spoke or the center um, rib for the uh, soft box, the upper box. So I always just like to find the center of this first. And you should see there's a Velcro tab that lines up to the other Velcro tab. So, so you just need to go around these one by one. The inner scrim is already installed. Now the outer scrim will go along with this Velcro edge here. So I'm just going to do that now. Just make sure that when you open this up, that you locate which side the Velcro, the Velcro is sewn to. That needs to go on the inside of the box, otherwise you're not going to be able to uh, get very far. So also hold it up so you can look for the corners. So you can line up the corners of the scrim to the corners on the upper box. So this is here, and we'll just start with one side. I always like to do the corners first, because it gives me a bit of an anchor point. You'll notice as you get full circle, you should start to feel a bit of tension. And you start noticing that the corners start to pull away. That's okay, just as a typical. Right, on that. What I do now, I've got all the corners in place, I now make sure I seal off all the sides. This is very important because if you don't, you can get light leak. You go through the light source itself, peeking through these little gaps, and spoil the whole purpose of having a soft box or off the box in the first place. Just to make sure now we've got a nice little join everywhere all sealed up, and it's all fine. Here you have a really simple pocket box ready to mount onto your light source. Now, all the photogenic soft boxes and ultra boxes have standard bowings and speed rings on them, so you can attach them to uh, all the, uh, the monologues that are available from photogenic. Uh, what you need to do is, I would like to put them face down, put the ultra box or soft box face down on a nice clean surface, and then just mount it on the light, it might the light to the soft box that way. On my connecting hole, and give it a turn, make sure it's locked in. You'll notice also that these have these little vents that are open here. Just a good idea, just to make sure they're closed up, just in case we 
get me on this. Now, it's safe to grab the whole um, bite and the soft box by the base like this. It's actually designed to take that weight. So just simply grab it by the white head. And now onto your cross stand. Always make sure that when you're using a light stand, especially with something like this, it's not heavy, but it does get unbalanced with such a big box hanging off onto one side. So make sure that the foot of your stand has at least one leg directly underneath the soft box. That way it can stabilize a bit more. The whole idea of the soft box is of course to soften the light. That's where it gets its name from. And as you can see, as you look at the light on my face, the light is actually quite soft. But what happens with the grid, over the, um, if you actually have a look on the side of the soft box as I turn it, so I turn it straight to the camera, you can look to be looking straight into the light and you can see the full brightness of the light coming through the soft box. Now as I turn the box, you'll start to see that more and more that surface starts to disappear from you. Even though the soft box is still visible to you, at some point you're not going to be able to see the actual softening surface. Now if you look at it from me, I'm standing now where you can't actually see but I can't actually see the light. And I'm actually in almost total darkness here. As I turn the light towards me, you'll we'll start to see the light suddenly dramatically increases on my face. The whole point you want to do that is to actually make the light uh, give it a more concentrated, uh, focused drop off. Gives it a nice feathering around the edges. Here you can actually see the pattern of the light. Here the light is almost at full brightness from the soft box and it's dramatically dropped off just as it reaches past the point where the grid completely blocks off that light. You also notice that the transition zone around here, I don't know if it shows up with the camera, but it actually is there, and it's also quite small. Now for comparison, I'll take off this. You start to notice the light, the wall behind me, starts to become mostly bright around the edges. You can see here now that our hot spot or our bright area has actually extended even further and now where the light drops off is a dramatic line. This grid gives you a more gradual feathering off of that light. Without the grid you it's almost a hard line happening. All the soft boxes are available on our website and they come with a 12 month warranty. They also come with a grid or without the grid.